Force the Vote fans and Brianna Joy Gray fans are fucking subhuman pieces of shit who are despicable people who are only in it for the aesthetic and for the grift. Dipshit retards like Brianna here. There are very few people on the quote left who I have less respect for than Brianna Joy Gray. What a piece of shit. I do hate her. We're never gonna have her on this show. Brianna Joy Gray is a truly reprehensible person. They are spineless, grifting, weaselly, worthless little pieces. An idiot. I have no respect for Brianna Joy Gray. This is what we call a, a Joy Gray moment right here. No matter what she personally believes, she covers for fascists. She's representative of the rot in the online left. Unworthy of the platforms that they stumbled into through the charity of people smarter than them. A genuinely unhinged person, she'll never have me on. You'll never have me on, will you, Brianna? You know that wouldn't go well for you. I'm excited to be joined today on Bad Faith Podcast for the first time by prolific uh, Twitch streamer, turned YouTube streamer. Vosh, welcome to the program. Hello, what a pleasure to be here. Hope you're doing well this fine morning. I, I am doing well. Look, so the reason I wanted to talk to you today is because uh, I had the pleasure of meeting you for the first time on Rising last week. Uh, you know, you were brought on, the producers reached out to you to come and talk about some of the uh, discourse that's been going around about Andrew Tate and this crisis of masculinity that seems to have been an ongoing problem and trend for some years now, um, the rise of popular internet figures like Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate as reflective of some deficit in society more broadly that is leading to both these YouTube figures and also a lot of kind of dangerous um, uh, socially maladaptive behavior offline, I would say, and whether or not the left has met the moment in the same way that the right has in terms of offering an off-ramp to people who feel perhaps isolated, disillusioned by society, et cetera. And what people noted after our interview was that there had been this history um, of you having had some substantive criticisms of me online, and it felt odd to folks that we had never actually talked about it before we were kind of in this public setting, talking very cordially. Joining us now to discuss is YouTuber Vouch. Welcome to the show. My pleasure to be here. How y'all doing? We're doing all right. Um, and I was... I was Im impressed by your professionalism and decorum in that context. And I thought that you might be a good person to actually be able to have it out with and discuss some of our substantive disagreements and also anything else you want to talk about today. How does that sound? Oh, sure. Look, I love arguing with folks, but um, the uh, uh, the masculinity Andrew Tate business, I, it's pretty serious. You know, I think it's important to take the opportunities you can to talk about it. Plus, there's just no fun in getting off in the head every time you're, uh, you know, in the same Zoom call as someone just because you've argued online. If folks did that, there'd be no way for anyone to do any kind of collaboration the way things are these days. I, I agree. And, and Vashak, I got to say, I don't see us as having really argued online. I have you know, become aware over the years of a number of you know, critical videos you've done um, about me. You, I believe, took offense to a radar that I did about defunding the FBI. No matter what she personally believes, she covers for fascists. Um, we were on opposite sides of the force the vote conversation. The specific force the vote movement was one of the most blatant grifts that got passed as left-leaning activism in the past several years. And I'm sure there's been some other things over the years, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, what would you describe as your kind of substantive uh, disagreement with me or my political approach? Oh, I wish I'd written a list. I've got such a bad memory. <laughs> Look, the gist of it is this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're all, you know, not everyone's going to agree on every part of this. Some disagreement is natural. But I've noticed a tendency um, across the left where as a reaction to the idea that softness and identity politics has in some way weakened the left's uh, movement, you know, the left coalition, uh, I see some people who are moving towards this, uh, you know, well, the right and the left both have the same fundamental lead you know, valid critique of society, which is to say that there are elites in charge who have an undue and inordinate amount of power and that the best way to challenge those systems uh, is with a kind of like radical populist movement that is left leaning, but can reach out to the right. You know, principally, I don't disagree with this. You know, it's definitely possible to take right populism against uh, economic elites and turn it in the right direction. Sometimes, sometimes they're just mad about Jews. Um, you know, really a coin flip on that one. Notice sometimes this, this discourse sort of spirals off and sends people in a bad direction. You know, I've criticized Jimmy Dore plenty because uh, I feel like he's one of the 
poster children for this particular movement, to the point now where he's just a Republican, indistinguishable in every way. Um, if I had any criticisms of your takes, they'd probably be somewhere in the line of that vein. Um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? This tendency, this like line that's been drawn. Yeah, I've heard people make that criticism, but I'm some I'm often confused as to why people make that criticism of me. So, for example, um, I know that you did an extended video on my um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is is right radar, right? Which was an argument attempting to with a provocative title and framing, say, hey, conservatives, not conservative leadership, I want to make sure that we make a distinction between we're talking about Republicans or conservative voters versus Republican or conservative politicos who I think are often acting in bad faith, whereas some voters have a good faith interest in a lot of these issues where there's overlap between the left and the right, but are being drawn to the right because they don't see a space for it on the left. I just want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not giving any credence to what Marjorie Taylor Greene as a person is saying. But in the context of that radar, I'm saying, okay, let's let's acknowledge that for once the right is adopting a position that has long belonged to the left, that these deep state institutions have historically over-targeted the left and progressive movements, whether it's the Black Panthers, whether it's communist and socialist movies and the uh, movements in the first half of this century. And let's make sure that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is not a good faith actor, who is buffoonish in her takes and in her politics and in her behavior. Let's not let her be the one that owns the space. Let's use this opportunity, this opening that Republicans have set up to actually advocate for the kinds of reforms to these institutions that the left has always wanted to have. Let's let's take this moment and write it in our own image instead of completely abdicating our voice in this space. And I was really clear in that in that radar, I don't like Marjorie Taylor Greene. What she's fighting for is stupid. She just wants to insulate Donald Trump. I say all of these things repeatedly. I say repeatedly that the right is not the answer, that people should not vote Republican, that I vote independent, that I would never vote Republican. And yet, despite what I feel to be, you know, an almost exhausting level of caveating, inevitably there's someone who pipes up and says, oh, Brianna Joy Gray is running cover for Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think I called her... I forget what what epithet I called her in the course of the radar, but some kind it wasn't of nice. Slur, no doubt. <laughs> no. LOL. But you know, you and I mean, Vosh. So, so what do you what do you say to that? Well, uh, I, I remember that this was the uh, the FBI discourse. Mm-hmm. It just in the terms of Marjorie Taylor Greene and the um, you know broken clock being right twice a day thing. It reminds mm-hmm. me a little bit of like a Holocaust denier who you know will briefly acknowledge the existence of the Holocaust only when comparing it to. Um, Uh, I don't know, uh, COVID lockdowns or something, right? Uh, You know, very marginal, very narrow. I'm going to take the correct sort of framing on an issue for just a second. So it allows me to take, you know, an awful take. Um, Because I don't don't think, I mean, and you've said this, right? I don't think Marjorie Taylor Greene really has an issue with the, 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 oh my goodness, sorry, it's so early. The FBI or institutional power. It's really just a matter of where it's being used. And I'm kind of curious about the way it's, you know, kind of taken shape in this discourse, too, because I don't really have an issue with the way the FBI has been behaving with regards to like the um, uh, the the raid on Mar-a-Lago or any of the recent investigation stuff since the Trump administration. I mean, it's still the FBI, right? Not exactly an ally of the left, but broadly as an institution of the state, you know, as the feds Um, they're doing, it seems a relatively upstanding job, certainly compared to what they've done in the past. I worry about fermenting any kind of opposition to them now in the context of how the right sees them as being, uh, well, you know, if, if you accept the FBI as bad broadly, you're kind of giving leeway to the right there to make invalid criticisms against their behavior when they're targeting legitimately stuff they've done. So I think that's a perfectly legitimate argument, which is why literally in the context of that radar, I said, part of the issue is that elites want to change institutions when they start to hold elites accountable. And that historically, the FBI and these kinds of deep state, for lack of a better word, institutions have been used to run cover for elites. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So regardless of how you feel about Mar-a-Lago, whether that a, was a political raid, and of course, there's all of this stuff going now, on now with Biden and whether or not he's being treated similarly or differently. And that's a whole other quagmire. But regardless of whether you feel like Trump is being unfairly persecuted by the FBI or not, the left knows how it feels about the FBI. FBI. And why not let the left make its claims about how the left FBI should be reformed in a progressive way? If you have concerns about the right only using this um, 
uh, issue of FBI reform as a way to insulate Donald Trump. And I, I find that a lot of conservatives in the writing, rising audience, for instance, are very hostile to the idea that a powerful institution would be weaponized to defend the rich but attack the poor or even attack the left and attack the otherwise marginal. And they are open to that argument. And they, in fact, were very receptive to that argument in the comments of that video and elsewhere online. And so, again, I wonder what you make of that. I, I feel like that's a legitimate point that you made and one that I addressed in the context of the radar. So why why the kind of hostility about the radar in particular? Well, because of the framing, which, to, to be fair, you kind of did right there, right? The Mar-a-Lago thing and the Biden thing ain't really comparable. The raid on Mar-a-Lago was because Trump had failed to comply with pre-existing demands to turn over the material. Seems like Biden just, you know, dropped spaghetti on out of his pockets and left a bunch of documents everywhere. Stupid, no defending it, but not well, really federal raid so territory. No, I, I don't think they're comparable, and that's why Biden wasn't raided. I do think that because Biden took the position when the Trump documents were outstanding, that it was deeply irresponsible for someone, a president, to have been in this position, that I think he said something like, no one should ever be president who was so irresponsible with documents. And now here he is, obviously, in the exact same situation. So I do think Biden set himself up for a number of comparisons and claims being made about his fitness because of overreaching with the Trump argument. Oh, However, oh I totally I totally get it. You know, I'll so tell you, you a secret. I voted for uh, Bernie during the primaries, not I, Biden. Yeah, um, I, I'm aware, but you you did vote for <laughs> Joe Biden during the general election, and oh, you sure. advocated for people to, to to do so, which is perfectly fine. But I do believe that's another point of contention that you've had with me, that you perceive you were you disagreed with my hesitation to endorse Biden so quickly, and my demand that the left hold out, and including Bernie, hold out a little longer in the endorsement process until he had gotten something more in the in the line of concrete concessions from Joe Biden. Yeah, I'm happy to hit to that. But with regards to the uh, the document thing, you said that the um, the question, uh, you know, he went so hard on the Mar-a-Lago raid thing, you know, mm -hmm. Biden. Uh, and then it turns out, you know, he's got these docs around. I agree. This is a political, uh, uh, you know, falter on his part, for sure. It doesn't really speak to the FBI, though. I wanted to ask, though, you know, specifically, because when, when the cons are talking about the FBI, they're usually criticizing them for behavior I think is just and warranted, like the, the Mueller investigation, you know, for all the fun and fireworks that turned out to be. In principle, I get it, you know, much in the same way that the whole Russiagate business ended up turning up some pretty interesting info, indictments and knowledge and how the Russian government was making a cat run out of there. Silly. Uh, the Russian government was making a good effort to, um, you know, uh, lean on the scales however they could. Uh, it seems like, at least at the moment, I don't really know what you mean when you say uh, reforms to the FBI. What does that mean? Because when M when MTG says it, she means like, don't go after cons ever. So like, what what reform are we like looking for here? Well, to be frank, what if, what MTG was advocating for was abolishing the FBI. That's what was trending. That's the phraseology that people were using, abolish the FBI. And I'm of the mind that given the historical, I believe in the radar, I mentioned that 85%, I think it was, of all FBI investigations, you know, wiretapping, assassinations, all of the things that it's done have targeted the left. So on balance, do I care about the Mueller investigation or a raid in Mar-a-Lago uh, as compared to the murder of civil rights leaders and the wiretapping of everybody from Martin Luther King to Elvis? No, I would happily abolish the FBI. So that's top level. If people are making that argument, even if it means inc incidentally that there are some, let's say, legitimate investigations that don't occur, I would, I personally, on balance, would be happy with that compromise. Now, that's not a compromise that needs to be made. Any number of institutions exist to investigate errant presidents and the like. The DOJ can continue to exist. This argument is often brought up in the context of, like, let's say, abolish ICE or abolish the police. There, abolish the NSA. There have been institutions that have accommodated the needs of those, you know, of those institutions before those relatively newer versions existed. And I don't think that simply asking for the substantive reform or abolishment of one institution means that everyone else gets off the hook, which is, again, why I made it clear in my radar that advocating for systemic reform for the purpose of insulating elites against criticism is absolutely the opposite of what we should do. But we should be cognizant of the fact that these institutions are designed and are put in place to do the exact opposite, to protect elites and target people who are marginalized politically or otherwise. And sure. if, if, they, well, if they the right wants are, to, right? It, yeah, and if the right wants to 
kind of step in it by popularizing the idea of abolish the FBI. And if that movement's going to have some kind of legs, rhetorically or otherwise, if there's going to be a, mo- a moment for that, why not have people who are much more knowledgeable than I, frankly, design the kinds of reforms that they think would actually be beneficial to the left? And I had some people on the podcast to try to talk about what those reforms would actually be. I think it was uh, Alex Vitale, and then I think I spoke to also Cornell West shortly after to try to to try to pin them on what they would advocate for in terms of substantive reforms to the FBI and whether they thought that this was a moment that the left should be pushing. And while I think that Cornell West did agree that this was something that we could politicize and take over if we wanted to, I think very few people were willing, or maybe we just hadn't put enough thought in it because it's you know a new moment, and to what constructively, like or concretely rather, that would look like. But I think but it's a conversation the left should be having, right? That's a that's conversation my, that people... Yeah, go ahead. That's, Oh, that's my issue, right? You know, Alex and Cornell aren't the people with their hands in the levers. The right is, or at least potentially could be, you know. Well, what, um, what do you mean by it, that? I mean that right now, you know, we, we talk about material conditions. The historical context of this discussion, abolish the FBI. This is not one in which we're having a level-minded conversation about the exact ways in which to reform the institution. I, I agree, but that's we're exactly what about, I'm pushing for. No, well, but, but hold on. But it ain't happening. You know, right, but why got, isn't it happening, Bosch? Well, this is the same issue I had with endorsing Biden. There isn't a third option. You've got exactly two in this case. Well, you've no, got, there was there was a third option, and I know that because I voted for the, the third president? option. Well, no, yes. in the in the in the general election, not in the primary. Yes, yeah, no, in the general um, election, I voted third party. Right, like I said, there were two options. Um, but two Bosch, options that you, can happen. Well, wait, well, hold on, hold on. You know, um, I've just I've never I've never really given a damn about you know. Well, here's a edge case that perfectly represents my virtues or whatever. You know, you've got what you've got. In the case well, of the FBI, well, I, I, just to be clear, got, I, Bosh, I didn't vote third party because it represents my virtues. I represent third party because practically speaking, if third parties get, I believe, to five percent of the vote percentage, they get additional funding. And it makes it more pop- possible for a third party to get ballot access and to be an actual contender and change that oppressive two-party duopoly reality that we live under today. It's a real thing that can happen if enough people actually do, in fact, vote third party. I can, and I'm happy to support third parties. In a way that throwing my vote away for Joe Biden in Washington, D.C. is actually doing nothing with my vote. So if we're talking about political pragmatism... He became president. Right. With or without my vote in Washington, D.C., and not even a state... That that is the most effective way for me to actually politically well, represent my interests. I'm not. That's, my point here ain't about criticizing your vote. So that only two people were going to be president, and there were right, only but, two real paths to FBI. No, no, no. But those are those are two different. But Fosh, I want to be really clear here. Mm-hmm. You said there were two options. You didn't say at first there's two options for what a presidential outcome was going to be. But my vote is not not connected to what I want the presidential outcome to be. There are other political realities that my vote can determine, and it's the same thing with this FBI stuff. I would have loved a world, Vouch, where you and I were having a conversation about, gosh, you know, I know the FBI has done a lot of messed up stuff. And if there's an opening here for the left, elected left representatives to be a part of drafting what new legislation would look like to reform the FBI, we should be pushing for that and and making sure that it's written in our image, not a right winger's image. But instead, now you and I are back and forth on the Internet, or at least you are criticizing me on the Internet for even wanting to reform the FBI, which seems to me to... Sh- which should be well, a pretty obvious reform, bedrock abolish. left. Abolish. Yeah, I would, I, I would also abolish the FBI, which should be a bedrock, non, non, diff, you, know, un, you know, easy principle for left people to adopt. Oh, no. I don't think, no, I don't think so at all. I think federal police are a fairly necessary institutional force, uh, much in the same way that in their current system we need, you know, municipal police. Uh, though obviously they are a largely harmful institution, you just can't up and abolish them. You need to take the work to put in systems that support the same basic functions and practices Bosh, they engage was your res- in. Was your response to me that, well, I think that Brianna's going too far in saying that we should Well, I, I haven't gotten to my point yet because we keep getting we keep getting edge cased here. The okay, issue I ahead. have, and you know, we don't need to make no analogies to uh, Biden or Trump or whatever. The issue here is that in this historical context, there are only, you know, regardless of what are paths you support broadly or in the long term, there are two attitudes that are institutionally supported towards the FBI. One of which is the standard boilerplate, let them do what they do, you know, Democrats, whatever, moderates. Um, and then the Republicans who want to abolish it. The issue that I have here is that the desire, well, that's true. There's no, the, no, 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 there's no, wait, 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 please, please, please. There's no institutional support. 
for like moderate reform. There are politicians who don't want to touch that is, the FBI. That's a tautology. And politicians you, who you are, want to you abolish are, it. You are, intent, you are framing the argument in a limited way. You are defining two choices. The and world then saying, is limited. No, no, no. You're defining two choices and then saying there's two choices. Mm -hmm. There is, in fact, a world where we, our job on the left, I believe, is to create additional choices, not to sit around okay, in this so doomer. This wait a minute, wait a minute. What I'm not to, to sit around in this, this doomer, this doomer zone, saying, doomer. "Well, we can't do anything, so let's let's be angry." Vash, you called me a what a, a subhuman something, <laughs> like a sub a subhuman well, fascist no or something. Force the vote fans and Brianna Joy Gray fans are fucking subhuman pieces of shit who are despicable people who are only in it for the aesthetic and for the grift. You wrote for, down for my advocating. insults, but I didn't write anything down. Come on, no fair. Well, I've never insult I've never I've never mentioned you in public, Vash. I, I've never wait. said anything about that's you in my fine. entire life. That's so, fine. So, so, You're, so, we're both public figures and we but, have the right to take shots at each other at our will. But I ain't got But there to the is no the this other because, because I, keep... I haven't but I just want to make sure you you were saying right now that there are two options. I want to be really clear. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you when you say there is no movement on the left to abolish the FBI. In fact, that is the sum total of my criticism. Why is there no movement on the left to abolish or at least reform the FBI? Why is Marjorie Taylor Greene, in the context of a self-interested campaign to protect Donald Trump, the only person who's talking about reforming an institution that who's who's raised on debt club or reform? If you want to reform it, let's talk about reform, Bosch. I'm a hundred percent on board well, with that. Well, she's talking about abolition. So are right. you? When I asked you what reforms you well, make, well, I I Brianna Joy Gray would, but I am not. I'm not going to die on this hill. I'm going to talk. I want in a community with people who are like-minded, Vosh, about what the best strategy for it is. I'm not interested in defending my take. It's just a take. It's just a thought. It's just an idea I that I would takes. love to I love develop. About takes. No, I don't want takes, Vosh. I want policy to make the left better. I want to change, make the world that we live in better. I'm not interested in scoring points on the internet. So if someone comes up to me and We're says, I have, a, I have a right tweak now. to your identity, I have a tweak to your philosophy i have a tweak to your plan let's develop this in concert with other people who are much more knowledgeable than i i say yes and to that Vouch. Okay, i'm not interested so in tearing anybody yes, down i'm yes anding you right now so okay, let's great. let's dial it back because i feel like we've rolled down a very steep hill very quickly the point that i'm trying to make here is that there are times and places to make certain types of criticisms now whether or not i even agree with the abolish the fbi but you know it fundamentally what this strikes to me is like an andrew tate fan screaming you know, Andrew Tate's been arrested on accusations of sex trafficking. Let's abolish the police. He shouldn't be able to be arrested for that. And a lefty stride in saying, oh, you want to abolish the police, do you? Hmm, well, maybe that would be a good idea. Now, I understand the temptation of this argument because you're meeting them where they're at. They're interested in this thing. But the truth of the matter is, and the thing that frustrates me is, they're not actually interested in police abolition. They're interested in getting their guy off. And while you think that you're doing our side, you know, um, polling people interested in getting Donald Trump off over to broader FBI abolition. I think what you're actually doing is the opposite, which is you're giving the institutional legitimacy of the left's critique of the FBI over to the far right who just want to get Donald Trump off. And I think that's kind of iterated in the fact that despite all your caveats and criticisms, MTG still quote tweeted you touting around, oh, look at this lefty, former, you know, secretary for Bernie Sanders. Even they agree the FBI has gone too far. And when they're in that mode, they'll take any stance. They'll say, oh, yeah, they killed Dr. King. They 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 killed Fred Hampton, you know, not that they give a shit. Um, and then they'll run with that as a specific part of their program to get their fascist wannabe dictator off uh, investigations and charges. But I don't think it does much to support real criticism of the FBI. I think it taints criticism of the FBI because it associates them with this insane MAGA, uh, you know, uh, hysteria. I think it worsens our arguments because it connects us and emboldens them to their argument. So what arguments is the, are the left? You, you mentioned that this is the wrong time. Is there a movement separate and apart from the conservative movement that is at all vocalizing any interest in reforming the FBI in any way? I don't even know what reforms we're talking about here. What are we looking to do exactly? Because I don't know if I'd agree with that. I admit the abolition thing is complicated. You can go a lot of roads with that. But in terms of reform, maybe, you know, if you could bite into something a bit more moderate, what would you do exactly? Are we talking about like uh, the revoc like, you know, more public uh, warrant uh, approval procedures on the part of judges or like uh, pullbacks and what they can do to get wiretaps on? Or what would you do exactly? I, I think that it's remarkable that in 
20 seconds of applying yourself to considering what reforms would be beneficial to the left, you came up with two that sound really good. I'm however, fine with those. The right's how, not, though. But however, there's been absolutely no interest in or any conversation in the least about that on the left. So here's my thought. I completely agree that Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of these right-wing fi figures are operating in bad faith, but they deny it, right? So what better way to demonstrate that their argument about abolishing the FBI is complete fluff that's only being used to insulate Donald, Donald Trump, one of the most elite people in the world as a former president of the United States, other than actually doing what they have not done, which is promulgating legislation from the left for the left that actually would be substantive reforms, the kinds of which I think would appeal to a right audience, a conservative leaning audience, even if it would myth the elected Republicans who of course have bad faith interests. How, in how this would that position. own them though? Wouldn't they want that? They don't like the FBI. That's just well, doing wait, what but, they want. But wait a minute, wait a minute. If if the left drafts left legislation that would reform the FBI in ways that benefit the left, and the right adopts it and votes for it and passes it. I hate to break it to you, but that's called a win. That's a good thing that well, just happened. Would it prevent the FBI from continuing their investigation into Donald Trump? It's, or would it be it's, substantive it's, reforms? Uh, Bosh, it's drafted by the left. So, uh, no, of course not. The left, I, I presume, it could the be whatever they want it to be. The left things all the time, you know. I'm not, I'm not staking any what, claims what, here on their trustworthiness. The Democratic Party that just spent the entire last two years making their entire identity about 1-6 and, and impeaching Trump for a million, uh, you know, over and over and over again, and one six commissions and all of that is not going to do anything that absolves Trump from responsibility. Nor do I think they should. Although they should have the appearance of not having a witch hunt because I think that hurts them politically. And there's no need for any of that. If, if he's reform, guilty, what he's guilty of, he's guilty of. And what he's not, he's not. If reform put forward, that does not in any way impede the investigation of Donald Trump. If it's a sensible FBI reform, the Republicans will just call it woke. Uh, they'll not vote in it, and none of their voters. Exactly. Will so here we are. Here, this is this is I what I believe are the two options that exist. The left puts forward good faith legislation that would address some of the legitimate concerns that are being raised by the right about the FBI, not insulate Donald Trump from criticism. What and concerns? also, it will also, well, the FBI has spent the last hundred years of existence growing its power and growing its reach. There is, a, I think, a perfectly legitimate mm -hmm. argument about per various aspects of the way that the Department of Justice and the FBI have focused on Donald Trump and some like what? And in, inequities. Well, I thought you just said this legislation wouldn't do anything. Well, that's that's my whole point. So why are you asking about that, Vash? Well, wait, that wait, then why did you just say that? You just said that though. You were just like, okay, well, address some of the concerns. I think it's fair. I think that some combination of the media's behavior and the FBI's behavior. It's obviously even when people do bad things, they can be politically motivated in their approach. I think that's perfectly possible. I don't know, right? Like, well, wait, I don't know. No, that's, well, wait a minute. We're doing the narrative. Well, 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 let me let me finish the sentence. You you just asked me, Vash. Let me finish the sentence. Let me finish the sentence. I don't know, so that's why I don't want to opine. But I'm not trying to opine on, for example, whether or not. This narrative that's out there that the FBI held up the um, making public that Joe Biden had these outstanding documents until after the midterms because they didn't want to hurt Democrats. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not interested in promulgating that narrative. But I think that there it's completely possible that there are some there is some legitimacy in terms of the targeted nature of those attacks. If there's not, then great. Then there's but now nothing. This is this is their but, narrative now. But but look. Here's the point, Vaj. Ignore all of that. The point is that you get to design. You keep creating. Here's, here's what's so interesting. You keep coming up with versions of legislation you don't like when the reality is this is a, an opportunity to come up with the exact legislation you do like for the left to be advocating for whatever it is. You don't want to abolish. I do want to abolish. My whatever you Whatever you want to do is what we should be advocating for, is my belief, progress us to actually take up and run with. The progress slight us... power that I have is over discourse, I, not, I'm not policy. I'm not talking and about the, you literally, well, 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 Bosch, obviously. Well, I, I'm talking I about what we that. push elected I, officials to do. I understand that, but notice how the rhetoric has shifted, right? Always little bits of it pop up. What we're talking about right now, the left constructing criticisms of the FBI in the form of policy and legislation, that has nothing to do with giving the right accolades on 
getting a broken clock, you know, twice as right kind of deal on criticizing the FBI, nor on pulling people from the right over, nor on meeting some of their legitimate criticisms of the FBI, of which they have only one, by the way, which is the fact that the FBI doesn't work for them. Now we're just talking about crafting policy to reform the police. The FBI are well, police, no. after all, fundamentally, I... and I've always supported reforming the police in many ways. But notice how now we're talking about something reasonable, which is, hey, you know, the federal police are, as many police institutions, rather well, corrupt and I, I hate to break it to you, but we... There's a part of this community that has been talking about something reasonable the entire time. And your 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 reluctance to participate in that is a, is a choice. And that's completely fine. But there's some of us who have said we're like very doing what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants by abolishing the FBI and giving them accolades and saying Look, they have legitimate I, criticism I, and I, saying the FBI <laughs> might have been politically motivated when it, they have Trump. Yeah. No, no, you slip in like these no, narratives here. Right. I, I think that which I, aren't well, necessary when but, criticizing the FBI in like a you, formative you way. obviously like the FBI a lot more like I, I I'm, you're not you're not going to convince me to not want to abolish the FBI. So I don't even think we should go down that road. See, well, then, uh, then at uh, the end of the day, all you want to do is what she wants to do. And well, such you're prattling about that's, it's meaningless. That's, you just want well, to do uh, Bosh, a Wait, no, no, I don't no, think no, I'm wait, prattling about anything. In, this is my a, show. And I'd like you to a, offer wait, wait, me a modicum both, of respect here. We're Bosh. both prattling. It's OK. It's fine. Prattling is fine. It's a free country. But no, it's, at the it's end not. Of the day, I, I, I take fascist. I think that's disrespectful. And I've been look in the background of all of this. We're both grown up here. It's fine. Wait a minute, Vouch. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. In the background of all of this is you are sitting here in a way that is um in the background is I'm I've been trying to downplay I've been trying not to emphasize what exactly your response to my radar has me. actually been. The reality is you called me a subhuman piece of shit mm -hmm. <laughs> as a consequence of what I think is and I what you just characterize as a reasonable conversation about reforming the FBI. I don't and think I, I called you that over that. Wait a minute. I completely respect that you don't want to abolish the FBI. I don't care. Like, I mean, I, we have a difference of opinion there. I don't think it's worth calling anybody names or accusing, you know, any ad hominem attacks. But my point is this. If all you are willing to get to, if all the, the, the place where you're comfortable is to say, wow, in this moment, it would be nice if left progressives or Democrats in Congress were advocating for the kinds of reforms that they think are valuable in this moment to provide a meaningful contrast to the kind of self-interested, elite-protecting reforms that Marjorie Taylor Greene is going for. Wow, I should advocate for that. And to the extent that I think that Brianna is not advocating for that, I can say, well, I think that Brianna needs to have a more focused message. I think that Brianna is going too far, but I would settle for, I, I would advocate for this. And it is frustrating to me. I do agree with Brianna that it's frustrating to me that uh, the left Congress members have nothing to say about any of this when they spent years talking about defunding the police, defunding ICE, and having this institutional critique. Where are they in this moment? Well, I'm not saying But that's not what happens. Yeah, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying at the end of the day, you know, you can dress it up as much as you want, but a fascist said that she wants to get rid of an investigative body that's investigating her corrupt dictator pick. And your answer to that was yes, but for woke reasons. And that framing will always be something that I take issue with. It doesn't matter how sincere or legitimate the criticisms are. Uh, there are times when you have to understand that the material course of history is guiding your country in a direction where you're going to have to focus on other priorities. Like it's with the police thing, right? We're in a very dangerous position in this country right now. Democracy might not last here. You know, nobody can see the future, but it seems like Republicans are pretty openly anti-democracy at this point. They've been working hard to get rid of it on whatever level they're capable of. And reforming the FBI, that's just that's fine, you know, depending on how it's done, if it's reasonable. But the narratives addressing the right's reasonable criticisms, they have only one. And it's that the FBI don't work for them. You know, oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene happened to be right on this one. No, she wasn't. She doesn't give a shit about what the FBI has done. Neither do any of her followers. You're not going to own any of them or show them up by giving them a better version of the legislation. They'll say well, it's woke I, and I they'll toss it in the I trash. I disagree with that. I disagree with that, Vash. I think that I know for a fact that many of her followers actually do agree with me. I know for a fact. When you say abolish the FBI, the exact thing that she said. Yeah, I know for a fact that many of her followers agree with me on two important points. That the FBI is an institution with an enormous power that has been used poorly to target people who are historically vulnerable, including people like them because they're low income and things like that. And additionally, I think that they agree that it should not be an institution that exclusively protects elites. And I think that that's a good place to work from. 
in a much more useful place Their framing than sitting on around. That is totally conservative. Oh, wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's talk about your framing, Vouch, because you just accused me of wanting to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants. But By your woke. words, do you both wanted to abolish the FBI? If I could just right? finish the sentence. Am I you wrong accused on that? me of doing, you just said that you want to do, I want to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to do, do but for woke stuff. So I want to ask you, is not wanting civil rights leaders, of not wanting Fred Hampton to be murdered, woke? Can you go back in time and keep him from being murdered? Because if so, God damn. Is that what woke. you think that I'm advocating for? Or could there be some pr prospective value in protecting people who are oppositional to the government and making sure that the FBI, FBI's powers are restrained? The Republicans will not do this. The Republicans have no interest in right. restraining the power of the FBI other than so curtailing it and using it for this, their own. This is such an important point, I think, that is actually what defines why there are these two halves of the left that exist right now. There is one half of the left that I think is really exemplified by the statement that you just made, which is that the right won't do this. Or sometimes you'll say things like, Democrats won't do this. And the entire political discourse is limited by what you believe the pre-existing actors in place are willing to do, which means at no point is there any conversation, even in loose, ridiculous kind of podcasty formats, at no point in academic spaces and political spaces and media spaces, is there any place to germinate ideas that have the power to actually push the Overton window in any way? Absolutely. And I think that that's, I think that's really destructive. And you don't have to agree. But, no, there is. There is. But you don't got to jump on a fascist trying to protect their strong man in order to make those points, because all you're doing is legitimizing and giving left approval credence to them. Same thing uh, Donald Trump did back in um, uh, uh, 2015, by the way, talked about how the DNC was screwing over Bernie. That wasn't him. You know, and some lefties bought this. That of, wasn't him of sincerely <laughs> criticizing the corruption of the DNC. That was him, you know, uh, trying to, you know, uh, 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 get a bite of lefty legitimacy as a maverick who could but criticize I, I love that example, Bausch, because the man won. <laughs> <laughs> the man yeah. became president of the United States of America because that message resonated rightly or wrongly, bad faith or good. So if if and if has some... he addressed corruption in the political? No, institution? but I'm not Donald Trump. It's the reverse situation, Vash. It's me saying to a conservative audience, hey, there is some legitimacy. Yes, I believe there's some legitimacy to your concerns here. Just like we opened this conversation talking about. No, there about... isn't because their concern minute, is that Donald Trump like... is being targeted. Just like we opened this conversation talking about how there's legitimacy to all of these, a lot of these men who have moved to the right because they feel like the social contract has failed them. They don't have a place in society anymore. They have leaned into a kind of misogyny because they don't have traditional gender roles to conform to and feel lost and lonely. I don't think the misogyny is OK. I don't think Andrew Tate is OK. I don't think rape is OK. I don't think any of this that is OK. But, I don't but there's an underlying there there. I don't open that discourse by looking at Andrew Tate going on about how he thinks society has failed men because you can't rape women for free anymore and go, hey, he's right on this. Not about all of it, mind you, but he is correct in that society has failed men. Well, and I don't, take it from there. I don't what, know what, what you're doing. I, I wait agree a minute. you have stay, to reach stay, these stay people there, where they are. Stay, but you can take their bad faith message and stay, go, Stay there. Ah. Stay there for a second. Stay there. I don't know what Andrew Tate has said. I've never like listened to Andrew Tate speaking. I got but in the ballpark. But, but if says. Andrew Tate has said something like a sentence like, I don't think there's a place for men in society anymore. I think it's 100 percent legitimate to say, look, I disagree with everything that Andrew Tate stands for. I think that he is normalizing rape and violence against women, and that's a pro that's disgusting, and it's, he'll probably be criminally liable for it. However, of course, it's true to your audience, and then including people who are like 13 years old, that there there is a kind of a crisis of masculinity happening, and I think there are some interesting solutions over here on the left. Why don't you come join me and talk about them? But your I think solution that's is absolutely the same as Marjorie Taylor Greene's solution: abolish nope. the FBI. I, I'm, I'm a little you're, confused, Vouch, because... You're doing her work for her, right? I, I don't know how many times I can say this. because I do you, I've want, already, wait, do you want to abolish the FBI or not? I, Brianna Joy Gray, think that that's a perfectly legitimate solution. One that, by the way, I could be I could be moved on with people who are knowledgeable about what parts of the institution should stay in place, what per, preserve a, a certain function that I might agree is useful, etc. Because I claim to be no expert on the... Uh, the entire workings of the FBI yeah, as an that, institution. That's, that's However, fine. It's complicated. But Vash, it, it almost doesn't matter because what I have said to you now repeatedly is that whatever version of FBI reform that you support, right? Because abolish the police, there's a whole lot of things in there that a lot of different people believe. Some people think 
it's not really abolishment if you're replacing it with this other institution that you can call the police or not call the police, but has a very different function and different funding and different framing and all of those kinds of things. But the point is, this was an opportunity for substantial reform, whether or not you want it to be, quote unquote, abolished or not. It's not an and opportunity it was, for substantial wait, reform. And it was an opportunity for liberals, leftists, whomever in Congress who were elected to call Marjorie Taylor Greene's bluff and say, this is actually populist legislation that protects vulnerable people against the overreaches of the government. This is what you're purporting to want. And if you actually believe in it, sign on to this legislation. Okay, for, wait, we, and when she does it, we gotta get to the heart of this. No, no, and when we, we, she we, does please, it, please, please. I do, I'm like six words away okay, from okay, the end of this Okay, all right, okay, you're six. Okay, we're at the end. Okay, we're at the goal. And when she does it, that's the opportunity to call her bluff. Okay, you can't call their bluff. We've been doing this for decades. We the literally haven't. The Republican, no, you will. The Democrats have. That's how easy it no, is. No, they haven't. Okay. No, they have been. Because the Republicans will talk about any manner of emboldening or empowering the American people or helping the American people get more change in their pockets or lowering taxes or anything. And every single time the Democrats do anything that would objectively improve the lives of the working class, the Republicans go, ah, this is woke and don't pass it. Oh, any climate change reform? Ah, that's woke. Anything having to do with green energy? Ah, that's woke. Anything having to do with like uh, unions or healthcare or anything? Ah, that's woke. Toss it out. There is no calling their bluff because while they may say they care about the FBI exercising power over the week, internally they have a consistent message was they want power and they want to kill you. Uh, you, of course, being whatever marginalized group is on the table these days, probably not me. Um, the the so, idea yeah, that you can I think call that you're wrong bluff, about that, but I'll, I'll no, just put, put it in that. Let you finish. Go you, ahead. Can, you can't call their bluff on this. It doesn't serve any point. The only thing you're doing is listening to a fascist trying to embolden her political strategy for removing democracy and all the barriers that prevent her from doing so and going, ah, yes, I think that she's right on this point. And then you propose a solution identical to hers. And wait, then wait, the wait, 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 wait. And then the, the solution reform is not identical wait, to hers. Wait, How wait, many wait, times are you going to say that straw wait, wait, man, wait, 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 and the reform version, the more let's introduce the discourse here, you still frame as addressing some of Republicans' legitimate concerns. They it have is. none. They have none. The Republicans are uniformly against any kind of power being taken away from authoritative institutions. They will back anything that can be done to empower the police, anything that can be done to empower the FBI, That's the DOJ, true. or the CIA. I'm sorry, it's not true. As long as they're in charge. And so, when they have the power to take over those institutions, like Donald Trump tried to by firing Mueller or firing the directors and putting his own cronies in charge, the way um, the DOJ, I forget it's with Barr, tried to get sedition charges being brought to uh, Black Lives Matter protesters, they don't give a shit about federal power being used to cripple the little guy as long as they're the ones doing it. And all we're doing is giving legitimacy to their lie when we pretend they have any motivations other than the raw accumulation of power. There are plenty of things the Republicans could have done to indicate they actually care about taking power away from corrupt institutions. They have done zero of these. None. Zilch nada. They don't do it and they don't care. So I said this at the beginning and I would just like to say this again. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I, we don't have to keep going back to this point. There is a difference between Republican voters, regular conservative people to whom these arguments appeal, and elected conservatives. There's no need to debate what elected conservatives in a position of power, what their investments in, in preserving their own power. Everybody agrees about this. Just like we don't have to go round and round and round about whether or not a Marjorie Taylor Greene was a good faith or bad faith actor. As I said repeatedly in my radar, despite you and your response to my radar, accusing me of being credulous and taking her at face value, I, I don't know how many times I can say it. This isn't about Marjorie Taylor Greene. This isn't about convincing elected Republicans. This isn't about any of that. Voters it's about too. The, it's, the, it's the fact that regular people on the ground feel differently about this. And I'm sorry, like this is maybe just a difference of opinion, but my interactions with and real world understanding of the political smorgasbord that is the, the 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 political diversity of this country and the random groups of beliefs that end up in any one given person who then identifies as conservative or liberal or somewhere in between. It's just not that neat and it's not that clean. And we maybe will just disagree about this because we have different experiences in the world and of humanity. But I know for a fact that there are people who have a good faith interest in a lot of things, including a good faith concern about the IRS targeting working class people, which is a true thing that happens, even though I think that abolishing the IRS does in the same way that abolishing the FBI potentially could if there weren't other um, prongs of 
the Justice Department, et cetera, to hold Trump accountable, end up letting millionaires and billionaires off the hook from getting audited and taxed at all, right? So I, I, I think that people, even though conservatives are weaponizing this IRS thing to try to, yes, insulate rich people from getting audits, it's good to say, hey, I hear you when you say you're concerned that the IRS has historically targeted the poor. I hear you when you say that this is a legitimate concern, and it is a legitimate concern. But if you don't meet people there, if you don't acknowledge that there's a core of something there, they have no reason to trust you politically. And maybe your interest isn't in convincing people and changing anybody's mind. And maybe my political project and trying to do so is ultimately a futile one. But I can't see that. I, I do not believe that there's more utility sitting on the sitting sitting in these media spaces, talking endlessly about what can't be done while the world burns, because a lot of people can't afford to extend the status quo in this way. And some of us want to just try things and throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And you said, I'm sorry, the one last point of what you said, just really quickly. You said that offering, again, you keep saying the same thing as Marjorie Taylor Greene. I don't care what you put in this legislation, but you cannot, you 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 argue that the, the left calls, uh, or liberals, whatever, the broad left calls Republicans on their shit all the time. It literally doesn't happen because Democrats never put forward clean bills advocating for populist policies. They never do it. We saw this happen with the $15 minimum wage where it was part of a must pass bill. Democrats intentionally took it out so that it could be killed. It was it was a 51 bill, right? It was part of the, the COVID reconciliation package. Schumer took it out, didn't have to, but took it out on the advice of the parliamentarian, which is advisory. So then it was subject to a, 50, a 60 vote margin and could be voted down by Marjorie Taylor Greene and, um, sorry, I uh, sorry, not Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, right? Over and over again, they will never have a standalone bill on things that they know are overwhelmingly popular and they'll make them look bad. They just won't. They'll, they'll, they bifurcated the bill pack better. They do this over and over again. So we never get these clean demonstrations of Republicans are against X, Y, Z. Look at, look at how Bernie has to run around defending that he voted down the crime, he voted for the crime bill because it had the Violence Against Women's Act in Women's it. Act that's, it, yeah. that's what they do, in fact. That's what Democrats always do to provide cover for the fact that they are not actually a populist or worker-centered party in the least. And they actually want substantially the same kinds of economic policy that the Republicans want. They just want to be a little bit nicer to the gays and the blacks and the immigrants. Kind not, of. not substantially the same when Republicans are calling for the abolition of the IRS, but I do agree that they're closer to the middle than a lot of people want to acknowledge. I'm not making an argument for the efficacy of the Democratic Party here. I'm only saying that you can take a pretty clean look at what the Republicans or, you know, McConnell failed to table or what they've shot down in the uh, in the Senate or the House or whatever. It's pretty obvious that Republicans just in terms of their policy prescriptions, once they get in office, are evil and want bad things. Uh, you know, that sounds like a sort of childlike simplicity, but it's actually the God's honest truth. Fake complexity is as misleading as fake simplicity. They will vote against things that are objectively good for the American people over and over and over again. It doesn't seem to affect their uh, their um, their voters opinions of them that much. Now, I believe you can pull people over, by the way. You said you want to you know, build a project and reaching out to people and that the complex variety of their positions make a make a more, uh, uh, you know, unique and uh, fractured. Uh, voter than what might be seen just by how people vote. And I agree with that. People are very complicated. The issue I have is that there's a critical difference between uh, the situations we're talking about here. When it comes to the concerns of a voter, reaching out to them, taking their bad idea, like abolishing the IRS and saying, hey, listen, I don't buddy, think it's a bad idea. But if you want to if you want to okay, call it well, not well, abolishing well, the IRS, if you want to call it reforming the IRS, can we please just stick with that? If you think that because because it's not the same wait, thing. Wait, 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 wait. I, I got to I got to finish. Go oh, wait, abolishing the IRS would absolutely be a bad idea. We have no systems in place. I'm sorry. Right I'm sorry. I thought we were still talking about the FBI. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. no, no. Sorry. The, the, IRS, the FBI, wait, too, but also the, more so the IRS. OK, the IRS. Whew, yeah. No, it's, OK, but anyway, you know, you take a Republican who wants to abolish the IRS. I think you can walk up to them. I think you can go, you know, OK, listen, I got you. I got you, buddy. OK, but we got to talk about this, you know, spin it off in some way. I think that's OK. The issue I have is who you do it to on what specific issues and how you sell it. MTG, I think, is a no-go. I wouldn't agree with her on literally anything that she said, did, or believed that I thought benefited her agenda. Because her agenda is oblivion. It's well, you agree with her on one thing. Mind. You agree with her about being anti-force the vote. Um, I mean, we both drink water, I guess. Sure. Wait, was she? Oh, that's right. That's right. Because, she, yeah, she was one of the people who was consistent about Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got water, sky is blue, and that. And, but don't you, uh, but, but here, white, wait, wait a minute, but why well, is it wait, that it's like water, sky is blue when, when it's something like that? But to me, 
obviously wanting to dramatically limit the powers of an arm of the police state is a no-brainer consideration. The fact that me and Marjorie Taylor Greene are both in interested in curbing government power is... She's not. She's not. The cut. So you keep doing... No, you, saying, no, you, no, okay, no, no, uh, she's okay, saying... Let me you rephrase. Let you me keep rephrase. doing that. Let me rephrase. That she's saying she's interested in curbing government power is an opportunity for... Like, I don't understand why you think that our, it's like you're you're talking as though MTG has the ability to write whatever legislation Democrats put forward. That's the opposite of what I'm saying. If she wants to open this broad category of FBI reform, she wants to open that Pandora's box. She's able to do so, frankly, because she knows that the Democrats are too feckless to actually call her bluff and do anything about it. The, nobody the world cares. Was the your, FBI, what, nobody cares about the FBI. Well, you don't maybe care about that. The, no, no, no. You don't care about the FBI. About no, no, no. The average American does not care about it. It's not like a key voters issue. Police reform is way more up there. And even that just gets well, towered not, over by other But they're issues. not doing that either, Vouch. That's the whole point. That's what's so embarrassing about this whole fiasco, that we had the largest number of people in the streets in a protest movement in American history two years ago, to which the Democratic nominee responded, we need more funding for more cops. Yeah, I agree. He it's won we anyway. We live in a hell world. I completely but, agree. We're but all why dying. why do we live Everything in a over. hell world? Vouch, why is there no a, accountability? We li we li listen, I the, like Biden accountability. Biden did that, and you told we, people to go vote for Biden. Yes, without any and I'll condition. do it again. Yes, because so, there are two candidates who can win, and one is worse than the other. But, there are two let, states. Let me ask the FBI. This. There are two states the FBI can exist in right let, now. Let, let me ask and you just, this. Wait, 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 please. There are only two states in which it can exist right now, as represented by the interests of people currently in power. That's and not that true. Is, no, 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 that is. Wait, can you who is fronting a public uh, 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 like support for FBI reform? Nobody. That that's my point. Then, that's then my that's point. It. Then listen to Gosh, that's wait. the problem. That's wait, the very problem. So wait. So, so you're agreeing with me then based on who is currently in power. There are two possible things no. that we can do with the FBI. No, no I'm not no, agreeing please. with wait, you. Stop, wait, stop. You just I'm agreed with me. I'm you just agreed with me. No, I'm not. With me. No, you're I didn't. Advocating for no, I didn't. Changing that no, I didn't. Exactly. You're advocating for I'm change. advocating right. for a so, third opportunity, so a third by, option. So in That's order my to job. Get, so if to get that option, you have to change the current situation, that would imply that an unchanged situation, aka what we exist in now, is one with two options as represented by the interests of people. No, there, there is, there is if, uh, by that definition, there's only one option because there was only one party advocating anything, which is Marjorie Taylor Greene. So by, by your, by your metric, there's the only one quo thing out there. An option. Fine. So then that's it. We have so, that and we have this. No, Vash, this is so ridiculous. No, you can change wait a minute, it. Wait a minute, you can wait a get minute. three, but right now there are two. No. You agree with me. No. Right now there okay. are two. You can fight for Vash, three. Right. who cares? I am fighting for three and you're convincing people to take one of two options because you're no, no, too no, no, afraid no, no. No, please, please, to please. advocate for anything in the world there. that's We're real. We're almost there. You are tying so option, You are tying option number three to the insane bad faith fascist. No, I'm Why? not. Why? No, 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 I'm not. No, 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 me, Gigi. Okay, I'll explain why? it to you. No, no, I'll no, 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 please, 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 please. Let me answer we your have, question. We have just two ask me why. Wait, wait, please. We have two institutional options right now, okay? We have two parties, if we may. We have the MAGA group and we have Democrats and moderates broadly. The MAGA group are composed entirely of fascists and people who want to abolish our democracy. And the moderate leaning Republicans, the moderates and the Democrats are some neutral flavor of law and order to maybe mild reform of the police. Why would you hinge any reform of the FBI to the fascists and not to the legitimate concerns of people who are arguing against police brutality. If you wanted to reach out to people who want to reform the FBI, don't reach out to MAGA voters, reach out to liberals. They were the ones out there on the streets protesting against police brutality, ineffectively, I might add, because we live in a hell world. But if you're going to tie FBI reform to some kind of optical or political front or movement, why would you do it to the worst people with the worst intentions rather than the le not worst people with the not worst intentions? This is the issue that I have. We, our power is in our voice. Our legitimacy conveys strength to broader public fronts. Marjorie Taylor Greene runs this train, not you. Where Donald Trump technically so you does. Can She's use the words conductor. like hinge and tie and do what you want. But I think most people and understand. And articles like and and two. I think that most people understand I, that my audience has no cognitive difficulty in processing, exploiting a opportunity rhetorically in all the audiences field. have cognitive difficulties uh, trust me i have one we've all my audience one. gets it my audience there's nobody who didn't already uh, have a hubris. bad faith 
there's nobody in my audience who didn't already have a bad faith perspective of me who's gotten a lot of clicks and views out of calling me every name in the book and criticizing every word out of my mouth, frankly. Unless you already had an inclination to think the worst of me, nobody who heard me say, Marjorie Taylor Greene is an utter fool, but she's opened the door to something that is legitimate, which is that the FBI needs to be abolished. Let's say substantive reform, since that's a sticking point for you, and she we just disagree not. on that issue. This and is, that this, this is, is what, like, this is Jesus like saying, Christ, dude, come on, it's, it's let like me saying just finish that, this No, sentence. it's like saying the Nazis opened the door to anarchism because they abolished the Wehrmacht government, you know, it, or sorry, the Do you the, think the, it's the, the appropriate to continually co- con- 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 compare Marjorie Taylor Greene, one elected representative of the United States of America, to the Nazi regime that killed six million plus Jews and what, however many tens of yes, millions of Russians. Absolutely, and, the fact that you don't think that's appropriate is insane to me. Like genuinely uh, unhinged. Uh, okay, I, I think that's pretty are disrespectful are fa- to millions so, of dead no, okay. people and, and real uh, life consequences. But we don't yes, have to go down that it's road. I think tragic, it's, look, I'm sure. No, I, I think it's a rhetorical. You'll just, you'll just drop a shoe no, at the door and Vash, then leave it. It's I, I think it's rhetorically. I think it's, there's a re- reason why Goodwin's Law is what it is. It's it's rhetorical. Historically, I think weak to constantly have to shoehorn Nazis into every argument to make your point. It's I don't think that either of us needs to do that. They're fascists. It's a perfectly but, valid look, comparison, I, I just, especially since in this case, Marjorie Taylor, this Green, Marjorie Taylor Greene also wants to abolish a federal institution that she's just using as a bulwark to achieve power, but other people might misinterpret. 85% of what the FBI has done is to crush people like me, people who are black, people who are left, care. people who Listen, are coming. You're, but I know that she care. doesn't care, Vash. Why did she you say that care. to me? I know then she doesn't why care. why do you keep bringing it wait up? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know she doesn't care. Historically, the Weimar Republic had done so many bad things. Do you think that made it more justifiable <laughs> when the Nazis said they wanted to abolish it in favor of putting okay. Hitler as the so Fuhrer? So the, the argument is... No, wait, can left, you answer that? The Weimar if, Republic had done, like, mostly bad things. It was a government in The, arg- the Europe argument is that if the, the left... In the early 20th century. If, the argument is that if the left wants to make a... The, if the left want, if the Sorry, if the right wants to make a claim... Like the police are bad. This is this is what was happening at the moment. After years of criticizing the left and calling everybody Antifa and flying Blue Lives Matter flags, between one six in this moment, there has been a really interesting shift and realignment inside the the Republican Party. They're all still pro law and order. They're not. They are. They all. If you take a look at what motivates Republican voters and which candidates tend to win in the midterms, uh, law and so order rhetoric cracking down on the BLM not protesters, all, Antifa. They're not all still law and order. No, they're I'm not anti making, wait a minute, the wait a minute, and FBI. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I am not making a claim that now all Republicans hate the police. I'm not making the claim that 90 percent of the Republicans hate the police. I'm not saying no such thing. What I'm arguing is that there is a new vulnerability in their arguments. There's a new subtlety to these arguments where for the first time, and perhaps a long time, Republicans can imagine a world in which they are oppositional to the police. It's not just a consequence of 1-6. I don't know if you watched that Andrew Gillen, Gillen Andrew, whatever, uh, Callahan, Callahan, Callahan mm-hmm. um, documentary. There are all of these interesting moments that are burbling up. And Marjorie Taylor Greene saying this thing about the FBI was in, in some ways like a, the highest profile crack in what has been a very formidable defense or alignment, I should say, of Republicans and the police since time immemorial, it seems. Now, you can say that it's not a real thing. It's a superficial crack. It's not a real thing. It doesn't it doesn't matter. My and I understand that you disagree with this, but my perspective is it's worth chipping away at that and see how far we can go. Let's chip away at them and either force them to double down and go back to saying they love the police and that's fine, whatever. No, no love lost. Or create opportunities, if they're going to tell their audiences, if they're going to speak to the average conservative voter and say, actually, the police aren't always good. Oh, actually, maybe we shouldn't, we should have, we shouldn't have qualified immunity. Maybe police people, police members should be held accountable too, because sometimes they go after people that I like. How is it delusional? Even Donald Trump, there have been, there's been a conservative push to end qualified immunity for years. That's like a real thing. They are only after power if it's in their way. There is no institutional support for broad police reform. Of course that's true, Val. But we're, the current conservative darlings are Trump, who said that we should suspend the Constitution, and DeSantis, who is currently constructing his own little Oceania down there in Florida. The current leading conservative constitutional interpretation theory is one where they essentially abolish originalism and go in favor of what like a kind of paternalistic Christian nationalism. They are purely authoritarian in every element of their political advocacy. And co- coincidentally, the only time they seem to have a problem with power is when it's in their way. Why would you why would you 
ever give this any weight or credence. What's so why crazy pretend, about it? Why pretend it's, it's a crack? It's not a crack. They're a what's, unified wall. What's it's crazy a brick. is that, like, literally in my radar, like, every time I talk about these things, I'll say exactly that. And you don't hear it. Like, it's like There's you don't no want to hear it. It's a steel I'll, wall. I'll, I'll say, hey, audience, this is a principle, whether it's free speech or limiting government power, and you believe in it. Now, the people that you like on the right who are talking about these things, they're saying they believe in those things, but they're not really good faith actors. They're just trying to protect their own. I just did a radar like this about the IRS. So if you genuinely believe in these principles, like the poor should be targeted by the IRS, here's alternative policy. For example, part of Bernie Sanders' um, wealth tax was to have a 30%, I think, quota for millionaires and billionaires getting taxed to try to correct for how disproportionately poor people are getting or audited, not taxed, right? So you, you, you meet them where they are. You say, I understand why these things appeal to you. They're not actually going to do those things to help I think you. That's great. So then you pivot. That's all this is. And look, at the end of the that's day, good. We, wait, that was good. That was I, I have no problem. Vouch, at all that's with what literally you just said. what my radar was. But you have a hang up about Marjorie Taylor Greene, and that's fine. You obviously think that she is more dangerous and more. Fascist. I don't like fascists. That's true. That that's the lefty fine. principle of mine. Look, that's literally that's fine. Uh, wait, BJG, that is you've literally hit the issue. If everything that you had said was, here is an issue Republicans are concerned about. I don't think they're coming at it from a right angle. Here's the that's, right angle. If that, Bosh, no, 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 that's no, literally that, what I but, said but, in but the radar. We'll, no. we'll play the radar right here, by the way, in the podcast so everybody can see word for word. Marjorie Taylor Greene has become America's favorite broken clock. And it's that time of day where she's regretfully 100% right. Now, I don't take her critique in good faith. I don't expect her to keep this up when a candidate of her liking is in control of the deep state, but you should. Her hypocrisy doesn't have to be the hypocrisy of the average conservative voter. I said, Marjorie Taylor Greene is a bad faith actor. They don't really mean this. They're only doing this to protect Trump. However, this is what the left should be doing. And, and the yet, fact that I say that, fast, and, and you yet, still hit me with all these bad face attacks. The and by the way, you the, didn't just wait, call Marjorie well, Taylor Greene a fascist. You call me a fascist. A fascist enabler at times. We'll get to your Ukraine takes, I'm sure. It's not about the core of the argument Bosh, you just you laid out to me. Do you think that's useful? I mean, do you honest, if you honestly think I'm a fascist enabler and someone who wants to murder you to Ukrainian children. The last you, one was a joke. Wait a the minute. First one but wait a minute. Why would you agree to come on rising and look me in the face and 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 be friendly and nice and act like all is well in the world? What? If you really have those if you really have that level of antagonism toward me, if you really think that I'm as bad a person as you tell your audience repeatedly. <laughs> Then why even agree to come on Rising in the first place? First of all, a couple of things. I've sat face to face with Charlie Kirk, you know, he's... So have I. Right, okay. I talked civilly with him. I don't have any qualms about that. Second of all, I say mean things about a lot of people. It's genuinely just... Uh, but why, uh, Vouch? Because I've been accused because, of being a grifter. I still... I've been accused of ginning up, you know, fighting over force of it. But I don't, I don't take personal attacks at people. I don't do response videos to try to create beef. In fact, I'm inviting you here today in part because I, I've ignored you. I've chosen not to engage. It doesn't seem constructive. But like, because you were so, you know, frankly, kind of polite and humble on Rising, I thought there might be a genuine opportunity for us to have a meeting of the minds at the well, very least. This, but then you, right. you make a joke like the one you just made and it makes me feel like this was a, a fool's errand. No, what we're having right now isn't a breakdown in communication. It's an aesthetic difference in how we approach what we do. Well, I, I gotta you tell you, human, background, human well, to human, I don't feel it like it's an aesthetic difference. It feels degrading and unconstructive in a space that actually means a lot to me because I think the project that we were ostensibly both involved, both involved in is an incredibly important one. This isn't like... I'm not trying to be like famous on the internet from talking about pol politics. I well, we only became be a jerk. Well, no, I was an attorney with a very good salary that didn't need any of this, to be honest. So I'm here because my passion for these issues drove me to start freelancing. I ended up getting a full time position and I ended up getting plucked by the Bernie campaign to be a part of this. That's that's why I'm here. And yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to grant like I'm not trying to grandstand to say that. But like, I just want to be honest about emotionally. It feels very frustrating to feel like you're trying to do something constructive. I'm open to criticism. I'm I'm open to saying this is a different suggestion. We can go this way and that way. You don't like force the vote. Okay, so Rhoda had these other asks that was so constructive. We grew, we developed, we moved forward. But it seems to me that your position, that your desire is to like coin winners or losers, dub winners or losers, good people or bad people, grif grifters and not grifters, fakes or, or legitimate folks. And that seems to be ultimately very destructive to me to this broader project that I think that we 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 share, no? 
We definitely share it to an extent. And I don't think that, I mean, there's obviously a huge overlap in the stuff that we actually do believe. I do genuinely believe that a lot of this is an aesthetic difference. If I was feeling cynical, I would accuse you of engaging in a kind of civility politic here, right? I mean, there were plenty of like sincere, well-minded political activists back in the 1980s who would have shown up in leather strap or like punk mohawks. Well, or that whatever. wouldn't bother they me. They might have. Well, and they might have been doesn't mean. doesn't bother me. That like that doesn't they bother me. They might have been me. mean too, right? Like well, either you either you really think you believe that narrative that I am indifferent to the interests of Ukrainian children, or you don't. Like which is it? Don't bring it up as like a joke. Do you think that I am happy I, that I laugh at genocide and think it's ha it's great for Ukrainian children to be killed? Is that something that you think? Then let's talk it out. But don't bring it up as a joke. I wasn't under the impression that particular bit would get to you so much. But if you want my sincere it's opinion, it's not about it getting to me, that, Vash. It's, it's well, real it, well, life. That, that's fine. Wait, wait, that, I'm not I, insulting. I don't wait, 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 think I'm that sorry. Ukrainian children wait, being dead is a joke, in fact. That, 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 wait, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be insincere there. When I said got to you, I wasn't trying to epically own you by indicating you're emotionally involved in the stuff you talk about. I am, too. Um, the sincere, actual, non-joking, fully straightforward position that I have on that debate that you had was that I only saw the damn clip. But I do know that a lot of lefties uh, and people adjacent to lefties, even not just lefties, have attitudes on the Ukraine war that I consider to be outright fascist apologia. I don't think that makes them irredeemable people or that, that I shouldn't speak to them or that they're bad people fundamentally or that they're malicious or lying or anything. But I do care about these issues. And it's a product of the fact that I care about these issues that I take the stances that I do. If I fly off the handle a little bit too much, I think that's a fine criticism. You know, nobody's perfect. Um, so having not... not you, you didn't actually watch the episode. You just saw the clip and you made it a pin. Did you, I don't actually know. Did you do a response video on my position on Ukraine? Have, have I, saw it on, I saw it on stream. If it got turned into a video, that would have been my editors. I don't think I talked about that for more than like 30 seconds though. So I don't think I did a full thing. Okay. I, I could just, be wrong on do that. Do you think it's responsible? Like maybe, maybe it's fine. Like I can't believe everyone makes clips about me. For all that I'm called a grifter, it seems that I'm fueling the media e ecosystem of YouTube with everybody making clips about my original content. <laughs> well, you know how much people dislike me, right? So that's a mutual thing right there. People get real mad well, about I, me. I, I can't speak to what people say about you. I have very consciously chosen not to engage because I don't think that kind of thing is constructive. And if somebody who wouldn't uh, normally listening to me is listening to you and saying Medicare for all is a good idea at the end of the day, I'll I'll let sleeping dogs lie. That to me, that's a net benefit, and I don't need to tear you down or talk about anybody else on the internet. That's not my business. Well, right, but, you don't do reactive content quite as much, right? If you're live streaming, of course, you go over all the clips and videos and arguments and right. discourse that you I, see I'm not and you a, react to it. I'm like that's what I'm saying. I'm not, and I don't mean this. You know, we are in d different spaces, and it's fine to be an entertainer. That's it's fine, but like that's not my niche. So all I would say to that is like I think it would be useful and good and probably actually elevate your content. I mean, not to, that sounds patronizing. I don't mean it like that, but I think it would be useful and good to perhaps review everything in total, in context, to assume good faith of people. That's the ir irony of the name of my podcast is the whole point is that to, to try to engage legitimately and in good faith with all of these arguments, even with people I, I disagree. Um, and that means not taking an isolated clip or even within the clip, frankly, I think I make myself clear, but not taking an isolated clip and making content on it that causes people to make jokes or claims about me like I like and enjoy the death of Ukrainian children. That's all I would say. With respect, I think that we're both culpable of this, even in this conversation to an extent. Like you mentioning that I'd called you subhuman or uh, you saying that it was disrespectful to the millions of dead that I might make a comparison to Nazi Germany. These are things that both of us do intentionally or otherwise to lower the opinion of the other in the eyes of our audience. Or I guess in, in this case, whoever is sympathetic to me who watches this content on your end since I'm not live streaming. I don't think, look, I'm fine with banter and insults back and forth. I love that shit. Oftentimes, I feel like a hyperfixation on it's to the detriment of the conversation because people get all up in arms about who's being rude or to who. The ideals, obviously, for everyone to be polite. But we both shouted. We both made jabs at each other. I think that's wonderful. I don't, I don't, I don't have think an it's bad with faith. Shouting. I don't. I don't have an issue with any of that. I think that look. At worst, I could be accused of Vouch, not. Um, not understanding the existential harm that Marjorie Taylor Greene and her politics present to the United States. At worst, you could say that I, you know, underestimate the potential harm that could come of me saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene is right about this one narrow issue. And that's a perfectly legitimate criticism somebody can make. 
But you you know that you went a lot further than saying that. Fascist apologia, yeah. Which I stand by. I think that you've engaged in it to an extent. Okay. It's fine. Who doesn't do that, right? I mean, the first well, principle of being a lefty is to hate other lefties. You know? I, I don't I don't think that I do. And, and in criticism. fact, I think that the FBI is a, is a fascist organization if we want to use these kinds of words. Um, and I could easily say that wanting to defend and protect the FBI. I think that Biden's a fascist. I, I talked to Cornell West about this at length. Then call me a fascist apologist. Do it. If you think that, then you well, should because, have no problem calling me that, right? But my, I, I don't actually think that that's true, Vash. And I also don't spend my time attacking. I attack the powerful. I'm interested in attacking or not attacking, but in criticizing Joe Biden because he has the power to affect so many lies. I'm interested in attacking institutions because they have the power to oppress people. I'm not interested in arguing with podcasters. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the point. And I think that you serve a valuable role. I think a lot of people in this space who I've argued with and disagreed with serve a valuable role. People like Sam Cedar, people like Jimmy Dore, who I sometimes agree with and sometimes I don't. I don't spend my time. And, it, and it's frustrating, I got to say, when you exercise some restraint and don't spend all your time fighting with people, for that to be characterized as having alliances and secret cabals of like, da, da, it's ridiculous. Well, like, I'm if, not making those criticisms. If, I if, usually criticize you for the stuff I think you've, said or made points about um i understand that you know the, the the tribalism here can get out of order from time to time we obviously diff different kinds of content but i'm glad you understand at least that there's a direction to this criticizing people in power is fine and good but sometimes bringing on some dipshit maga hat to argue with for two hours while calling him every possible word that won't get you banned from youtube is legitimately a good way of moving over people from the right it sounds stupid, but especially with the right, you know, oftentimes their allegiances have more to do with conveyed strength than actual arguments. So if you can make somebody look kind of funny and make a couple of good jokes, they'll take you more seriously. And so those what's the are difference attitudes. between that? Let me ask you, like, what's the difference between that and what I'm talking about with alluding to the fact that, oh, you like Marjorie Taylor Greene? Here, what about my what about my pet pet project over here on the, on the left? Because there are people who've said after your rising appearance, you know, it's wrong to ask. You know, it's wrong to ask Falchon to talk about this because of past statements he's made about women. You know, it's wrong. It's 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 inappropriate. It's hypocritical. Da, da da da. Like you can you can you can make any argument that any person is inappropriate to allude to or to bring into a part of a conversation or to respect in any way or to validate rather in any way. So what is the difference between you bringing some debating Charlie Kirk? Are are you and I validating Charlie Kirk and his beliefs? or that he's a legitimate political figure by engaging with him in debate. Some people think so. You know, Some people think so. It's funny you bring that up because there was an instance in my conversation with him that I thought kind of spoke to the principle you were talking about, about showing him up or brain cucking them or whatever term you used. Uh, we were, he was talking about, sure you might've used cucking. that term. <laughs> he, he, was, he was talking about the pharmaceutical industries and how they're bad, Fauci, ouchie, whatever, God, you know. And then I, I said, you know, you can't pull that crap with me. I want to, um, I want to nationalize these industries. You can't, like, this doesn't work with me. Will you nationalize them? And he dropped the subject, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's like a, a very workable example of what you're saying is, is good to do. Mm -hmm. um, you, you talk about differences, right? In, in this particular, and I'll do the Godwin's Law a bit one more time, okay? I swear, just one, you know, it's a treat, and I'm dropping it forever. Um, I, I, I've read up a lot on the whole Nazis, fall of the Weimar, whatever. There was a strong intellectual weakness on the part of the uh, Stalin-backed communists in uh, Germany at the time. The attitude was, uh, around a lot of them, a very um, a, a tendency to underestimate the Nazis. The idea that this was just like another upsurge of conservatism, a populist conservatism that could be used by them. And they ended up actually being supportive of some of the institutional destruction that was done by the Nazis as they slowly like undid German democracy because they felt that it was a sort of a, an, a dismantling of um, bourgeois democracy. I am very, very, very... Um, um, what's the term? Vigilant, I guess, of tendencies that I see in line with that. Um, you know, obviously, I'm not perfect in what I see is, you know, like leans into that. I could be wrong in my assessment. I feel confident on this one. But I do have a particular like fucking. Uh, oh, can I say that here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. OK, okay what? Well, OK, I, I was so good this entire time. I have a I have a thing with that specific subject. Um, and I do think a lot of lefties really underestimate it. You know, this, it was like the, the, the Bernie or bust discourse too with Biden and Trump. And so many lefties were like, yeah, Trump and Biden are two sides of the same coin. They don't understand. A lot of them just don't understand. Bourgeois democracy may be a killer, but it is infinitely better than what we could be living under. And I think that leftism can only really even have a chance at making its arguments if we exist in a system that's not openly persecuting us in the way that the MAGA crowd probably would. 
the first chance they got. I mean, God, can you imagine if Barr had started putting out insurrection charges and all the BLM protesters? It would have been over for democracy in this country. Thank God he got ousted when he did. So that's a bugbear for me. But it's not born of insensitivity or bad faith tendencies on my part. These are sincere things I care about. So I understand your argument. Yours, it's the mainstream argument. It's the mainstream democratic liberal argument. It is, in fact, the vote blue no matter who argument, right? It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, but I what? don't. But, but wait a minute. I, I, I honestly don't feel like you understand my argument with respect. That was part one of a two part, three hour interview. Part two will drop on Monday. You can access it by becoming a subscriber at patreon.com slash bad faith podcast. You won't want to miss it because we get more in depth into force the vote and really, I think, uh, resolve some issues once and for all. And we have some real simpatico on some really important issues about the attitudes uh, that the left bring to progress strategy and our willingness to be adversarial to the Democratic Party, which I think have been at the root of many of um, the fights and much of the divide that has existed on the left since the end of the Bernie 2020 campaign in the force the vote moment back in 2000 so do tune in you can find it at patreon.com slash bad faith podcast and as always i'll see you later tonight on Colin. keep the faith